Hey, what's up, everybody? Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Hey, you know that song, Yakko's World, from yes, Animaniacs? Who uh huh. Well, you know, the incredibly brilliant man that wrote it is here. Yeah! Randy Rogal. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Okay, guys, the talent of our guest is just bananas, okay? He is an Annie and Emmy Award-winning writer, singer, songwriter, pianist, actor, producer, hello. You know and adore his work from iconic shows like Animaniacs, Batman the Animated Series, The 70, so much more. Google it, okay? We are so <laughs> thrilled he's here. He is the brilliant Randy Rogel. And Stacy is my agent and gets yes. me lots of Randy work. Randy Rogel. That's, that's quite an introduction. I, bl I blush. And you. well deserved, Thank I you might much, add. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we just had the privilege recently, earlier this year, to see Animaniacs live. Oh, fun show. And uh, we, were, we were saying afterwards that, you know, obviously so much, I mean, just so many prolific pieces you've written, but to see it all in one chunk like that yeah and then your interaction with rob and then tress and jess and it, mm. the orchestra so brilliant i'm so glad you like um, you know what was cool about it? and so unique it's it was so very unique. very cool i've never seen the story of a show any show for that matter told live you mm -hmm. know on how little things happen in a show and certain songs and why they'd happen and what songs didn't happen because and why and it was lyrics so, that had to be it changed was so amazingly yeah. cool but the most amazing thing and this is a kudos to you is that mm -hmm. you really got to see how amazing what you do is oh well thank you because and i don't know and is, timeless. is that why you're doing the show to show people how amazing you are well, and, <laughs> no, and, i was trying to make a buck and it's so <laughs> timeless i mean just the lyric and I mean just it's yeah. just incredible how it's still so relevant and and fun and sassy and I used to fight with some of the producers on because you know they would want to put a happy Gilmore gag and I said no 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 you yeah. want to write these things so that 20 years from now yes. everybody will still yes. appreciate them yeah it's really nice of you to say that because uh and and I don't know if I said this at that performance you're at but People like, you know, brilliant people like Rob and Tress and Jess, you know, who are, get, they're, they're the voice performers. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of perform, uh, you know, appearing at the cons. Rob, I, I, Rob does an obscene amount of yeah. Yeah, know, man. over 100 or 200 a year. Yeah. He travels a lot and tells me about that. But see, people like me, uh, me like you guys, well, no, you're a performer. But when you're a writer, when you're a composer, mm -hmm. I know other people who are like artists and directors, you know, we... We're in a, in a studio, at, at, like I was over in the Warner Brothers lot, and yeah. we have, or at the animation facility, and we sit in our offices, and I would write, or I could pose. I had a, you know, I get to have a piano in my office, mm -hmm. but I never really got to know what how it affected the audience. I never got to see yeah. what, how right, it affected the audience. Right. So when we do the live show, what you're talking, about, it's really a joy for me mm -hmm. to see, you know, see the audience react to it, and then the other part of it is. I found a lot of the fans, you know, they don't realize these things don't write themselves. You know, <laughs> yes. to sit down yep. how you come up with the ideas. Yes. And not everything you write comes out perfect the first time. And a of lot course. of times I fight, you know, we had to fight with the censors, with mm -hmm. broadcast standards and practices, or just with, you know, yeah. within, yeah. you know, the editors yeah. and all that. Uh, of uh, So I like to show the audience, I say, you, you know, do you, you want to hear a song that got killed? Yeah. Or that oh Steven Spielberg didn't want us to yes. do? Or that the, the network didn't want us to do? Or you want to hear the original lyrics before mm -hmm. I had to change them? Yeah. yeah. And that's fun because then you get sort of to figure out how a show comes to yeah. be. Yeah. Absolutely, man. What and inspired you and to, to take it on the road? By the way, AnimaniacsLive.com, you can find out where they're going to be and Run, don't walk. Absolutely, you, gotta get there. you must um, see the show yeah. live. What? What? You'll love it. You'll love it. It's, it's very funny. better than kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what inspired you guys to do this? Yeah. I mean, and take it on the road and. Well, that's a really good question because what happened is Rob doing, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. doing his performances. Uh, he one time, you know, because Rob and I are friends too, he one time, I forget what he said, he says, you know, Randy, people always ask me to sing those songs. And I thought, oh, that's nice, great, you know. Um, and so then he has a live podcast he does. Right. Yep. He's got thousands and thousands of listeners. Talking Tunes. So, yes. Yeah, Talking Tunes. It's a great, yeah, it's great. a great, maybe you've been on it. And so they had him do a live one up at Universal Studios. You know, we all, mm -hmm. we all you know, which, live very close yes, to Universal. Which, yes. by the way, we were there. We went oh, okay, you saw that. We, we, buddy, we know a lot oh more than you. Yeah. I'm so honored. I'm just like, You're you know, not the only one that was fancy back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Veal Buzz Weekly. <laughs> this is the show. Yes, to watch. we were thrilled to be there. That was special. Well, you know yeah. what happened is I, th I don't know if you saw the one before because Rob told me they they want him to do a live one rather just on their on, on yeah. their mm -hmm. podcast, and so. He asked Maurice Lamar, it's just because they're pinky in the brain. They went right. up there, and of course, that, you know, people mobbed to see yeah. it. So they said, we'll do another one. So he says, Randy, you know, you just live a few minutes from there. Why don't you come up to the piano? We'll just do some of those songs. And so we just winged it. Mm -hmm. And then they did it again. They did it again. So we started doing it in some other places. We did it for the Writers Guild, in fact. For a lot of other wow. writers who are very, you know, critical, right. critical right. and they liked it. So uh, we got the idea that, you know, this might be a show. Mm -hmm. But, of course, then I... I had to get permission, so we went to Warner Brothers. Yeah, what was that? How many hoops? How many hoops? Oh, can, you, gosh, can you count that she's high? she's so smart. Hundreds. So she knows. The hoops were crazy, but we got You're through You're like an it. Olympic hoop jumper. Yeah, like an Olympic hoop jumper. We can't, because you wanted to go, wow, what is this? What are you doing? No, I went to there. It was Mark Kaufman, Raymond, who they ran the entertainment division. Really great mm -hmm. guys. And, and, I, and, and Mark now runs, I think, Warner Brothers Theatrical. And we said, you know, are you only just doing like Broadway shows like Disney? He said, oh, no, we like to capitalize all of our assets in any way we can. I said, well, right. I, we, we have a show that you own that's ready to go. And he goes, what is that? And I said, well, we have this idea of Animaniacs Live. And we just tell the stories of the songs. As Rob and I both have tons of, you know, I did, grew up doing tons of stage. And right. Robin is, is very comfortable in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. Completely. And so they thought, well, I don't know. what." And so basically what we said, look, don't worry about anything. Rob and I, we'll pay for everything. We'll just... And we'll build it into a show. We'll build an right. audience. And then if you're interested, we can do some more with it. So they said, okay. And then, of course, we had to get Steven's permission. Mm -hmm. So and That would be Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. And, Who made and, that call? And God Was that your call? No. Well, but wait, he gave you the piano. He so. did? How did you know that? Wait a minute. We're we going to get to that. We're going to get Let's that. not get, go there yet. He, that, I'm Nancy Drew, Randy. You're knew Nancy Drew. He knows everything. You. I um, tell you, Steven Spielberg is the most <laughs> remarkable guy I don't know how he does. I mean, I didn't have a lot of interaction, but I met yeah. him on a couple of occasions. Yeah. And he was, he always knew what everybody was doing, what was mm -hmm. going on. He was hands on. I mean, <clears throat> that first season, he was doing Jurassic Park and Schindler's the same year, and yet he managed to be involved yeah. in all this. So, yeah. Yeah. And in fact, what really got me is when we did, I did that song with I'm Mad with the Kids in the Car. Yes. I saw him at a rap party, and he, and, and Tom Ruger, who was our producer, right. yeah. um, great producer on the show, and uh, he said, yeah, Steve, and you know, this is Randy. He goes, oh, yeah, and he says, hey, how did you get in the back seat of my car? Uh, the guy? Oh, good, you, so if you have great. the same problems, That's good. the yeah. average great. guy does. Because yeah. I thought, man, this guy drives his kid to school. How does he do yes. that? Yeah. But anyway, we so um, you know, he had an affinity for it. He knew Robin Chester just really well. And he knew me, I guess, from the songs, mm -hmm. recently, at least peripherally. So I went back to, to Gene McCurdy, who ran Warner Brothers during those golden years, right, and we sort of right. look at her as mom. Mm -hmm. She's uh, living in San Francisco now, and uh, you know she does well at whatever she does. So I called her, and I said, yeah, we gotta go to Steven now. And I, she said, all right, hold on. And so she put me in touch with his publicist, Martin Levy, who's just mm -hmm. a great guy, and he loved it. So I said, Martin, here's what we're trying to do. Can you talk to Steven about it? And he, so he came back, he said, Steven wants to know, are you using his name to sell the show? Well, he said, well, this is Steven Spielberg's Nanny Maniacs, but he says, no, don't do that. Just say, yeah. you know, he... Um, but you wrote the songs. Yeah, we wrote the song. But don't, you know, it's not, I, I, Steven is not, is yes. not producing the show, so he didn't have any control over it, so don't do that. But, mm -hmm. yeah, he says, that's fine. And so I'm back to Warner Brothers, and they said, okay. So right. Rob and I go off on the road doing it, and then as we built it bigger and bigger, Warner did come back to us and want, you know, because anime is a very valuable property yeah. to yes, them. Yes. And we were and we were building an, an audience bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So they decided to make us licensees and they were very generous with us and That's really got wonderful. behind us, gave us the so you cool. know, they gave us the whole logo. And mm -hmm. the one who really went to bat for us on that was Sam Register, who's just Sam is the ultimate cool guy. You ever met Sam Register? No. He, nope. he is like Mr. Cool and mm -hmm. he runs Warner Brother Animation. In fact he you know, he has Gene McCurdy's old job. Right. He runs all of that and he just stepped right up for us That's and helped awesome. us get, you know, because you, you have to credentialize yourself. You need people in the studio also, and they have right, reliabilities right. and all that. So Warner but they Brothers knew, was, I'm sure, that you guys were going to do it in a way that was oh, yeah. completely And we were the original notch. guys. You know, it wasn't yes. like we were a tribute band or something. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> we made... <laughs> hey, what's wrong with tribute bands? Nothing, <laughs> wrong. Nothing wrong with that, but no. the, and the difference would be, like... 
if you were going to see Bugs on Broadway. Yeah. Right. But Mel Blanc was going to be there, and Carl Stalling was going to be there, and Chuck yes. Jones, you know, the people who made it. Yes. And, and uh, you know, I actually did have a chance to be around Chuck Jones during his final years, because he had an office over at Warner Brothers, and it was like, you know, he would hold court, and we would mm, sit there. And you wow. want to ask him how he came up with all of this totally. stuff, and where right, they come from. Right. And he he does, uh, you know, we do that in the show. Ro I mean, Jess comes in and tells you how he came up with uh, yeah. the first. Right. You know, I just had dinner two days ago with uh, Billy West. Yes. Who, and Billy's just like the most Genius. talented guy in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. And so we we're having dinner over Gindy Tai. And um, so I began talking about how he came up with these voices. Oh, my <laughs> God. It was the most. He, we said, well, because I loved Fry. Right. Uh, and, Fry, you know, and, and he breaks those voices. And he was telling me this Dr. really Zoe, interesting. Right. You have to have, have, have Billy tell it to you. But he had seen, of all movies, and The Diary of Anne Frank. And they're yeah. in that very serious, <laughs> you know, deep, dark movie, are two comedy actors. Ed Wynn, and I can't think of the other guy. He's a British guy. I think that was the name. But he was talking about, he watched him, and there is Edwin, and he, he does Edwin perfectly. Yes, he does. Right. And it's the scene where the guy had been stealing the food, you know, because they were all starving. Oh, and no. Edwin says, it was you all the time, you know. And he, I stole from the children, I can't believe. And he, he's doing, you do. <laughs> Out comes Zoidberg. <laughs> Wow. And I go, oh, that, that, he yes. was just telling me where he taps in. And, you know, of course, Rob got uh, Dr. Scratch and Sniff from Sellers. Peter Sellers. Yes. He just he just channeled Peter Sellers and do it. And he yeah. thinks, yeah. oh, now it makes sense how all those mm -hmm. guys do it. It's just yeah. brilliant. Have you ever seen when Jess, Rob, Maurice LaMarche, maybe it was Jeff Bennett, too, they all start talking like Christopher Walken together. They have like this oh, argument. Yeah, the walking walk off. Yes. Uh, the walking off. It's, it's hysterical. <laughs> yes. So being around those guys is just great. But, you know, we're... You know, another uh, another guy was in, in at the anime exercise, Peter Hastings, one of the mm -hmm. great writers. He you know he did most of the Pinky and the Brain yeah. and all that. He played right. the so you know we're the we like to say we're the ones who put the words in these guys' mouth yeah. or yeah. the yeah. songs yeah. in yeah. their mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you well, did, and you did. Well, and Animaniacs is on Netflix now. I know, and so. It's very exciting because we we saw this at the performance, obviously, yep. and, and being in the community, you hear this, but your fan base is so multi-generational now. You have people that actually grew up with the show, but now you have people who it's maybe their kids or people that are just discovering yeah. it. Um, what has it been like for you to be such a part of such an iconic show? Yeah, that's a really good question, Stacey, because we've worked on dozens of shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I run a yeah. show now, and... and um, you know, because I had done Batman, and uh, we you know, Hysteria was another show, but you know, in the middle of that was uh, Animaniacs. But mm -hmm. Animaniacs just is one of the ones that hit. I, you know, who knows? I remember when we were doing Animaniacs at first. Um, Nancy Cartwright, yeah, was in um, was playing Mindy in Mindy and Buttons, mm -hmm. and and she'd been talking to Rob about, yeah, I'm doing this new thing, you know, The Simpsons, thing, and you know, wow, you know, yeah. That, so you never know. You just do your best work, and sometimes you do great work, but it doesn't resonate with the audience. This mm -hmm. one really did, yeah. and uh, to your point about a multi generational audience, I think because we wrote that show to crack ourselves up, that you know, we wrote it sort of just to be hip. Right. That ki kids are so much smarter than you think they are. Oh, yeah. You know, people. Yes. When I was writing those songs, they're going, "No, no, the kids won't get them." And they wanted me to write them like Barney. I said, "No, right. no, kids. Kids are smart." You know, and I said, "Who cares if if they I, if I write a song about all the countries of the world, it, they're not going to hear the song and know the countries of the world, but it's going to whet their appetite for mm -hmm. geography. They say, hey, geography is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. If you get that much done, you've done pretty well." So. You know, we, we've done the show, and I, you're right, most of the audience are adults. Mm -hmm. And we did the show with the orchestra, the, the Denver, Colorado, and that was, we, we did it in Denver with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra, and that was yeah. 88 pieces. That yeah. was twice as big as the one yeah, you saw in La Mata. Yeah. And they had advertised it and built it with their subscribers, too, mm -hmm. so they could wow. come as a, like a special show. Mm -hmm. So I look out, and there's these people dressed like they're, they come to see Mahler. The opera gloves. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. This woman, and I remember this rather attractive, sort of 60-year-old, but very attractive. Yeah. And, yes. I got, I thought, and I thought, oh, no, she has no clue what this is about, you know. And so we did the show, and of course the animation's coming up, the orchestra right. stories. And then after the show, we did a talk back with the mm -hmm. audience. Would do, and everybody stayed. I mean, we had, what, 1,500 people, whatever it was there. Mm -hmm. And so we came out in the audience. And as I passed by her, I was thinking, okay, here we go. You know, I go, <laughs> you know, she, she'd never even heard of Animaniacs. She didn't even know what it was. Right. And I said, how was it? And she told she says, this was the most entertaining evening. I'd laugh. And I, I thought, good. That oh, makes me feel bad. Because what I told me, I told Rob Letter, I said, you know what? 
you don't need to know Animaniacs at all right. yeah, in right. order to enjoy you this really show. No. You yeah. really no. don't. You really don't. No. And not only that, your shtick, you and Rob together, oh. so natural and so Wait, great. Let me give I you laughed a dollar. my freaking ass the, 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 Let me give you a, the, give me the dollar oh, thing. Trish oh, going back yeah, and yeah, forth. Going back Jeff, and forth. Yeah. No, but like what you said earlier, I mean, playing to a microphone or to a piano is one thing, but playing to yeah. a live crowd, and you guys have... Clearly, there, and there's some things you just can't teach. I mean, and you guys really have, all of you have that essence that's just so yeah. Yeah. infectious. Well, you know what? I think for, for, uh, for me partly too, but for Tress and Jess Rupp, they've all done so much improv. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I did a lot too. But I grew up on, st I mean, I do, right. I, I've done so much, you know, I, I, I don't know if you know, but even all during the Warner Brothers years too, I did about 26 productions of Singing in the Rain. I was the Donald O'Connor. In fact, I did wow. it for Donald O'Connor. Yes. And I've done tons and tons of theater you growing up. You beat me up. there, but we were going to get there. Oh, okay. Look, he's you, trying to predict where we're going. Oh, but he's I was trying, just saying that well, gave me my stage work. He's trying to stump me. He's yeah. trying to stump us. That's crazy. Uh, stump so, me. Well, stump well, well, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about that. Because <laughs> you grew up singing in the rain. No, just kidding. Singing and acting. Yeah. Uh, you went to West Point. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, all those tap dance lessons I took at West Point. Worked in the corporate world. It's a natural segue. I mean, you worked in the corporate world. So we wanted to little bit about that and then how the heck did you find yourself working here in Hollywood mm -hmm. you know this is a bizarre you know the way you put it that way I go West wow Point. It, it, West Point it, is, the musical. it is pretty wild right <laughs> that's, that's your great next idea. Project. yeah actually we at West Point they have a show called the 100th night show because but you know because West Point was created in 1802 yes by, I've been there I, I saw cheap trick at West Point it was like a formal thing one of my friends from high school attended there and I was what in is the, cheap trick is that a show or something uh, the remember. band Cheap Trick. You know, Cheap Trick. Uh, well, oh, you, you saw Judy Cheap the Band Lovely. both performing at, like, yes. at Eisenhower yes. Hall. Yes, and okay. so he's, we were good friends, and I was in New York at the time still, and he said, I need a date. Will you come? So I, he didn't have a girl. So I came. It was a whole formal thing, so I'm in a formal gown oh, watching che Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick. With guys sing, in uniforms. Sing, sing the flame yeah. to me, by yeah. the way. But yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, it was amazing, but it's what's such an incredible place. Well, you know, I mean, it's a... You know the school for soldiers. I mean, that's yes. where all the, the 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 top military officers come from. And so when I you asked why I went there, when yeah. I, when I uh, I grew up doing lots of shows at the Old Globe Theater. I had a lot of, but you know, I, that time I wanted to get an education. I don't know. Right. I probably my parents kind of influenced me. Uh, so I don't know, but I it w I had to apply to get a congressman. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you have senators kind yeah. of. Yeah. But um, when I. When I went there, I, I I was so stupid. I didn't quite associate with the military because I'd never been in the military. <laughs> None of my family. I mean, my dad was in World War II, like everybody else's dad, but you know, he didn't have yeah. a military career. And uh, I should say, everybody. So my wait, did age, you just? My, everybody's my age's dad was in World <laughs> yeah. War II. Did you just wake up and go, West Point? Yes, that's what I would like to. How, but I tell you, when I woke up, when I got there, I almost one quit. Make I, that leap from from theater and. It's acting to West this Point. Appeal. I don't know. You the know, appeal. Was it the uniform? It, Come on. No, I didn't think the uniform. I just thought, well, it's like this prestigious uh, yeah. prestigious institution, you know, all these famous guys, you know, Eisenhower, Patton. <laughs> and then also, it was a free education, although mm. it's not really free because well, they no, take... Well, no, you have to start And I country. did my graduate work there, so I, I, like, yeah. after that, so I had like six years in the military. Yeah. But wow. I quickly, after I got out of there, you know... It, 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 I guess everything adds up to your life, and it Absolutely. that was an all an engineering degree. And when I was there, it was an all male academy too, mm -hmm. which I can't believe. Women came in after I left. I thought, oh, how could I miss that? You know? Yeah, right. So it was an all hardcore. It, when when I was there, you had to get a degree in engineering. Mm -hmm. Now it's a much broader base of degrees you can get. Right. And then when I got out, I went I went to live in Europe. I lived in Italy for four years. And, wow. And so when I when I, and in Berlin for part of that time too. So when I got out of the middle, I knew I didn't want to make the military my career. It just mm -hmm. wasn't my, mm -hmm. who I was. Although, uh -huh. many of my classmates went on to be big guys in the military. And it's funny because West Point was created in 1802 mm -hmm. by Thomas Jefferson under the advice of George Washington, those are all big names to drop, aren't they? Right. Who said, you know, during the Revolutionary War, an American Revolutionary War, all the officers came from Europe mm -hmm. and they were trained under Napoleonic tactics, you know? So they had European officers and George Washington said, no, we need American officers, we need homegrown officers. Mm -hmm. And in those days, officers were all engineers. Yep. And so that's how West Point started. And since then, since 1802, there was a class that was called the class that stars fell on. And it was the class mm -hmm. of 
I'm thinking 1915, it was Eisenhower's class. Of course, mm -hmm. they all went to World War II. So it was Pat, yeah. Omar Bradley, all <laughs> yeah. these guys, the all these guys, guys had yes. became generals. The yeah. class yeah, started yeah. And I learned that as a cadet, right? Well, now there's a second class that stars a oh. fellow, and they have more generals than that one, and that's my class, which is class of 76, Ray Odierno, who became the chief of staff of the army, but raised the guy who caught Saddam Hussein. He commanded mm. the war in Afghanistan. Wow. How um, do you know all this well, stuff? Well, I just saw Ray at a reunion. Okay. But, um, Should we call you General Rogel? No, I wasn't General. General I kind of like David that. Petraeus was there. You know David Petraeus? Petraeus? Yes. But he was two years ahead of us. He used to haze us. Um, wow. Haze us. And then, and then um, Stan, Stan McChrystal, who became, you know, he ran the war in Afghanistan. He's wow. the one... Obama fired, but Stan's just a brilliant guy, brilliant, wow. brilliant soldier. But a lot, I mean, this is there's crazy. so many generals. So when we go back, I remember we're looking at each other and go, I can't <laughs> believe we're running of the world. In fact, one of my friends, I'll tell you this, a really competent guy. I ran into, you know, they had me sort of host it because I have yeah, some yeah. theatrical experience. So I, we're all the guys there. And, and afterwards, you know, the banquet, I'm running around, I ran, I ran into him. And, I, and I, he was in civilian clothes because a lot of guys were in uniform. I said, Jack, I said, you know, where are you living now? And he says, oh, I live in, um, he says, I live in Virginia, Alexander, whatever. I said, oh, are you, are, you, are you at the Pentagon? He goes, yeah. I said, oh, so you're still active duty. He goes, yeah. I said, what rank are you? He said, I'm a lieutenant general. Now, this is exactly, I'm going to give you the tape. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, what yeah. he did. He, okay. said, he said, I'm a lieutenant general. I know. <laughs> and he, but he's a brilliant guy. He's a great guy. But it's just like when you come, when we all knew each other when we yes. were nothing. So we can yeah. look back that now. So, but anyway, that's I, what I, keeps you humble when you still know people humble. that knew you when you were well, not I, I so fabulous. I remember when you were crying and you <laughs> yes. were like, you know, the, the clothing formation. You couldn't and, even do your photo. So, what was your corporate gig that you got into? Well, see, when I got out of the military, then I needed a job, you know, and so I. Corporations, some of the big ones, really love junior military officers because mm -hmm. they, you know, they're all got an education, yep. and they've all been responsible, and they're all right. you no know, lines of communication. They know the chain of command. Yep. So I had interviewed with several, and Procter and Gamble picked me up, yeah, and they took me to Seattle, and I said, "Where's Seattle?" And they said, "Oh, you know, everybody loves Seattle." You're gonna so love Seattle. I, and I ended up actually staying there, you know, quite a while. But um, I got promoted, and then I got recruited away to another company, Digital System. You know, so I was traveling a lot and do, you know selling these high-end items that we would present with computer systems and yeah and at one point i just realized this is not what i want to do for my life i remember i just made this we made this sort of the big deal with the, one of the bell you know bell south yeah and i came back and everybody's cheering and we're saying oh this is a great contract and i thought i quit <laughs> how old were you at that point you're like well, i'm done i was probably like 30 something were okay. you still mm -hmm. playing piano were you still being creative or had you just sort of put that in a, no that I'd always had it wherever I go I always like even when I lived in Italy I'd swim at a piano mm -hmm. but yeah. I, in Seattle I started getting back into theater I hadn't done theater for you know a long time yeah. mm -hmm. but they have a big theater community there so I thought well I'll just try out for something and then I got in and I began I got on this really weird show it was a long running hit called Angry Housewives so that mm -hmm. sort of instantly I was known and I worked at the Seattle Repertory yeah. Theater I worked at a lot of theaters there but I finally realized, now I want to work in film and television. Mm -hmm. And so I quit my job. I came down here. I slept on a friend's couch. So you came here to? To uh, Los Angeles. To Hollywood. To Hollywood. Yeah. And I, I was sleeping on a friend's couch, and I was just, and then finally got a little apartment. I, I woke up every day just paralyzed, going, what do I do? What, you know, how, nobody knows me. And I would go in to get an interview in the, you know, with an agent, and they'd go, Oh, this well, is this is good because right now there's so many people mm -hmm. in those exact shoes yeah. right now yeah. that are watching this show right now. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff right here, guys. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what happened to me. I don't have yeah. you, but I, I I like to say that I know every door <laughs> in Hollywood because they were all slammed in my face. Oh. Um, I went. I would go to you know because I had to get an agent. To, you know, Hollywood's an agent yeah. sort of town, and it has to be that way because if you put, I mean, I run a television show now. And if you if we put an advertisement, we need an actor. The oh line would be a mile long. Mm -hmm. You need agents as a filter and casting right, director right. and all that. So uh, I was going through, but I I'd always been a pretty good writer. So I was yeah. I was coming down like as an actor. Yeah. But I and I was getting, you know getting like to the producer level, but nobody yeah. knew me. I had no credentials, but I began writing scripts too. Mm -hmm. And I would be submitting them to agents, and I would get calls, and they would say, "Yeah, okay, I like the script. What have you, you know, what have you had produced in film or TV?" And I said, "Well, I, I haven't had anything produced. You know, I wrote a couple of plays. I got the 
We don't care about plays. Hey, what yeah, do you what do you have <laughs> So I would go to me and they said, you know what, you're, you're at the wrong level. You know, you know, I have guys in my stable that have all been, I just need to make a phone call. I can easily get them in. Mm. You, I, you know, it's like, and so this went on for like about 10 months. I even got a call from CAA, which is a big agency. Yeah, of course. And I went yeah. it from a, a, um, a screenplay I've written. And when I got in there, I saw Tom Cruise in the lobby. Oh, I'm, you know, this is cool. You the, said, I'm the, in now. The, yeah, yeah, this agent looked at me, and really, he just went, <laughs> he goes, oh, Randy, this is Randy, you are, you are so at the wrong level. There's nothing oh I can do for Oh, my gosh. Well, this all comes. He wasn't like, laughing with you? Well, he was nice, but it was just like, you know, Aww. this is crazy. You know, you, Bless you your know, heart. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm that, so this all culminates with a, with a, a, I won't name names, but there was an agency, a kind of boutique agency, and I'd submit a script, and this agent called me back, young guy, too. He says, yeah, I read the script. I liked it. And so I said, listen, before we go any further, I don't have anything produced in film or TV, okay? I don't have, you know, and he was like, uh, Hit a nerve. I said, too loud. No, no, no. Hit a and, nerve. And, he, and he, yeah, he, he just said, whoa, whoa. He says, well, gee. He said, well, come on. And he, so I came and I met with him. We talked. So he actually, I don't know if he's allowed to do that, but he said, you know, I tell you what. Write me a script, and he gave me a, a, a yeah. show that was on TV. I think it was The Fresh Prince of Bel Air at the time, whatever. Mm -hmm. Which I, you know, so I go and I watch the show, and I, so I write the script. I really craft it, and uh, I sent it into him. So then he calls me back, and he says, "You know, I like the script. I showed it to the owner of this agency, <gasps> and he wants to meet you." I was like. Yes. What? Right? Yeah. So the meeting was like two or three weeks away. So I wrote a third script just to be cool, right? Yes. So I walk in. Overachiever. Yeah, I walk in, I throw that script on his desk, and I say, I just want you to know I can do that anytime I want. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. Now, this guy, I, I mean, it. Good. I mean it. he had this desk that was like a boat. Yeah. And I think, I really do, I think he sawed off a few inches off the chair I was sitting Because my head, so I, was like, I was like this, right? Oh. And then I'm sitting there, so it was very intimidating. And he had this sort of Van Dyke beard too. I remember. Yeah. So he he's he's reading my my script in front of me, and the, his the agent that is, is like a parade rest behind him, right? So he's reading my script in front of me, and he would do this. He go, oh, <laughs> and I'm sitting, I'm sitting oh going, my yeah. At the end of it, he closes it. Now he has three scripts for me. Yeah. He said, um, "We think you have we think you have a lot of talent, and we think that you can work in this business, and we think you can make money." He goes, but we're not going to represent you. Oh, Joe White, what? gotta be to the which, butt. To which, at that point, all I could do was laugh. I just went, <laughs> I said, okay, you know, why? He says, because nobody knows you. He said, oh my God. I, I mean, I'm gonna have. What's with the nobody know the people, knows you thing? Yeah, Jeez, it's, it's like an this old catch bit. twenty two, right? Yeah. He totally. Says, I'm, he says, you know, I, I have other guys I can just call. They've all done. So he says, he says, you, I'm gonna have to sell you like crazy. And he says, you know what? I don't want to work that hard. Now, at least he was honest. I was you know? going to say, yeah. So when the doorknob hit me in the ass, and I'm standing on Sunset Boulevard with nothing but an apple in my hand going, what the hell happened? You know, if you were to make a movie of this, it would be like the clouds part, <laughs> and this ray of sunlight comes down <gasps> on Randy, and, and the angels go, ah! Because at that point, I realized, I am never going to get this with an agent. I have surrendered all my power to these guys who if they could do what I could do, they would. But they're <laughs> yeah. in sales. I thought, I've been in sales. Procter & Gamble trained me in sales. So I just started calling the studios directly. Mm. And I had some friends who, did, in fact, a friend of mine, Kelly Ward, you may know Kelly. Yep, yes, Kelly Ward. Yes. Kelly was working over at Hanna-Barbera, and, and I remember I met Kelly, just a great guy, and we grew up together in San Diego, we knew each other. And uh, and I said, yeah, I wanna be a writer and all this. So he, he says, you know, I think there's this, this new Batman show that they're developing mm -hmm. over at Warner Brothers, an animated show. I thought, oh, I don't know anything about animation. He goes, no, I don't think that, you know, they're trying to do it like a regular, dark, you know, yeah. live action thing. So he called over to Barbara Simon, who was the producer there, and he said, yeah, I got a guy who wants to write on Batman, and so they, they wouldn't even burn a stamp to mail me the Bible. I had to drive over there. <laughs> so I get the Bible. For those of you who don't know what a Bible is, a Bible would be, if we're going to make a show, it lays out so all the writers are writing the same show. You know, here, you know, if you're doing The Simpsons, okay, here, you got a guy named Homer, you know, Ma, right, Ma, you know right, it lays right. out, there's the relationships, mm -hmm. and these are the kind of stories you want to do. So I got that. So I wrote a, you know, never having written for animation, I wrote this Beck script, like you write a live act, because I remember they were saying, no, you know, you can't do a shot like that. But right, anyway, right. I wrote that, and I sent it in, and Barbara said, hey, you know, uh, I liked your script, I showed it to the um, 
I showed it to the producer, a guy named Alan Burnett, who's now my yeah. best friend. Mm -hmm. Alan, but Alan, Alan, I just love Alan, but at that time he was the big boss, you know. And you should have Alan on your show because mm -hmm. he's the king. Um, well, we'll tell him you said that. Yeah. I, oh yeah, I, Alan, <laughs> Alan is the godfather. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everything comes from Alan, he's just a brilliant, brilliant guy. But um, she said, Alan, like, so he wants to meet you. So I go in to meet Alan Burnett. And um, I, you know, I didn't get in his office. He opened the door and he, there was another writer sitting in his desk. He was and he said, yeah. oh yeah, you're, I said, yeah, I'm Randy. He goes, oh yeah. I says, listen, I don't have room for you on my staff, but I've already geared up, but I just wanted to know who you were. And I said, well, good, because I want you to know who I am. Somebody knows so, who yeah, I am. Yeah, so, <laughs> then, so then I went back and by this time I was just about out of money. Mm. I was saying, okay, great. I'm gonna have to go take another corporate job, you know? But I had the idea, um, I was going to a family reunion and I, um, with my wife at the time, and so we, she was driving, and I, uh, so I just wrote this other script. I had an idea for another Batman mm. script, and that's the one mm. that hit. Mm. So I wrote it going, and I remember we got this family and everybody's at the pool, and I'm sitting by the side of the pool just working on this script, you know. We got back, and I gave it to, I went to give it to Alan, he goes, oh no, you, you, see, you need to write another script. I said, well, you know, I just had this idea, I lied, <laughs> you know, I just came off the top of my head. <laughs> And, that's uh, what I do. So, so he, he called me that night. Mm. It was like 11 at night. Yeah. Wow. He said, I'm not bothering you. I said, no, Alan, you're not bothering me. He said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy this script. Wow. Oh, what did come. that feel like? I said, I said, oh, good, I need the money. He said, well, I'm going to have you come on. Um, I, he says, I wrote a story. It was the origin of Two-Face. Mm -hmm. He said, I've written the story, so I'm going to take the story credit, but why don't you write the script for it? I said, okay. He says, well, be in my office tomorrow. I remember too, you know, I came and I wrote, I wrote that and it went really well and because it was two-faced, they made it a two-parter. So we had this cl oh. big cliffhanger, right? Oh. So I went back to him because it went to production. People were like, and I said, um, do you have an idea for the second one? The second part? He said, no, I don't. I said, well, I do. He said, what is it? So I told him. He said, I really hate that. <laughs> I said, well, how about this? How I do you really him, feel? I, I gave him another one. He goes, now that I like. And then he said, Taylor, how would you like to come on staff? I said, oh, I want to be so grateful if you do that. He said, let me talk to Warner Brothers, because I wasn't in the union or anything. Right. So they brought me, he said, they're just going to bring you in week to week. So at any time they can let you go, but we'll, we're going to try you out. Mm. So I became the writer for Forrester. I mean, and he really put me, I mean, I was writing all the time. And he was just great, because he would go, no. <laughs> You know, See, now you it. were gaining some credit. Right? Yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah. That he would be teaching me. You know, I mean, I yeah. learned right. animation, I learned story, you know, I learned structure. He says, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. one time he was reading one of my mm -hmm. He goes, you need some action here. <laughs> you know, there's nothing going on. <laughs> you know, like, oh. So anyway, I, I schooled and that went, And then that first year went by, and that first year out, I got the, the, the primetime Emmy for, I wrote the yes. origin of Robin, yes. so he really so helped great. me. And then I saw the Spielberg guys, you know, all the guys mm -hmm. doing Tiny Tunes. Mm -hmm. yep. I said, well, you know. I should write on that I show. I do comedy, they, too. Yeah, they, yeah. They, were, they were developing Animaniacs. I said, right, right. well, I should work on that show. And they said, no, you write, can I use a bad word? They go, yeah. Yeah. Said, you write that dark shit. Mm. Batman. You're this, broody. This, first of all, that's this not is a, a bad comedy. Word. You're like, yeah. uh, yes, uh, <laughs> people know me now, and I do comedy, too. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah but I said, I said, no, I, 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 he, they said, well, you write that dark stuff. Yeah. And I said, no, no, comedy is me, you know? So that's when I went home and I wrote that song with all the countries. Right. And I, I turned that in and went to Ruger and they liked it. Spiel like Spiel like that. And so they they did that one. They said, "We'll write another one with the states and the cow." You know, they right, so the right. states and cow. They came back. Let's do the universe. I said, "Guys, I can do more than just a <laughs> list song." You know. Yeah. <laughs> so I began writing more and more songs. And then, right. then Tom Ruger had me write a script. And so gradually I moved on over to because we'd finished that season of Batman. I'd written a couple more, and then I went on to Animaniacs. Mm -hmm. You know, what was interesting, though, is about 10 months to a year later, maybe that, um, they, Alan came to me, because Batman was doing great. They were in the next, he says, hey, you know, we're behind on Batman scripts. Could you help us out? I go, yeah, that'd be fun. You know, so, so I'll write a couple Batman scripts, because I haven't written them for a time. Mm -hmm. So in the Monday morning meeting with Gene McCurdy, we're sitting there with all the writers going, and they're going around with you. I said, oh yeah, and this month I'm gonna be writing some Batman scripts. She goes, but wait a minute, Batman's dark, and you write the comedy stuff. People. I, I said, lest so we forget, people. Right? lest we forget, it's like you're always let's good as your last show. <laughs> I am not one trick I pony. I can do it all anytime that I want. I'm not one trick pony, people. 
And that's all we have for part one. Come back next week. Check out part two. We're going to be right here. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You better not forget to subscribe. You know what, Chuck? You, you always have time, time for a little buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demos That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.